So changes are upon us. It's October 2016. My name is Chuck Charlton from Royal Page and the host of MiltonDailyHomes.com. Uh, the, there have been some new guideline announcements, and so we want to talk about them. We've gotten a lot of questions from uh, current clients, from past clients, and uh, and from the subscribers to our Milton Daily Homes uh, daily emails. So why did they bring these changes forward? First of all, is there's concerns over affordability, especially in areas like Toronto and Vancouver. Uh, long term and short term, the government is exposed to a lot of risk. They are the full backstop when they insure a mortgage and trying to reduce some loopholes in foreign investments. That one's more of a common sense thing that probably should have happened a while ago. So if you look at the, uh, the four categories, here they are. The big one that I wanted to talk about today is the second one, which is the stress test, because that directly affects affordability. And uh, the other things are, again, the tax loophole. There are going to be tighter guidelines in place for people with more than 20% down. The stress test is really for people with less than 20% down. And then there's also some risk sharing, which is gonna be a public consultation process. So here we go. The stress test has been around for a while for one-year mortgages, two-year mortgages. So if you had like a three-year mortgage, you would have to qualify at the posted rate. And so there's really two rates that exist out there. The posted rate, which right now is the as of the time of recording is about 4.6%, and there's the discounted rate. Most people assume the discounted rates are the mortgage rates, but there are some people who uh, do need to accept the posted rates, uh, no money down, low credits. No money down is really a cashback, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So. Buyers must now qualify for a mortgage uh, at five years or more at the posted rate, which has an effect on affordability. So the impact is, the simplest way to think about this is buyers probably have to drop their price point down by about 10 to 20%. So if you could have maxed out at a discounted rate, two and a half percent mortgage for $600,000, you probably drop down to about 500. That'll change depending on price range, but it's a good rule of thumb to think that if I could have stretched that far, now I gotta scale it back a bit. Now, some lenders early on, again, we're, this is all new, this is the day after the announcement, some lenders believe that it'll remove 10 to 20% of buyers. Now, we'll talk about impact to the market later, but really, uh, many of the homes out there are getting five or six offers. So if that means they're getting four offers now, it still means things are going to be pretty strong. And we'll talk about that, like I said. So stress test only applies to mortgages with less than 20% down. If you're above that, you follow more of a traditional path that we're used to. This also applies to mortgages approved after October 17th. So if you've purchased a home uh, but haven't moved in, if you've sold a home and you're wondering how the buyers are gonna be affected, this is grandfathered through until October 17th. So existing deals, uh, from my knowledge, will not be affected. Uh, we're probably looking at long-term rate cuts because the GDP is gonna go down. Oil and housing are really on the ropes at this point. And uh, overall, the Canadian economy is not super, super strong. So I would expect, here's what I believe will happen. I expect that there's gonna be a rush to buy and there's also gonna be a rush to refinance mortgages prior to October 17th. Uh, it's also making it harder for first time buyers. And that's one of the things I don't like about these rules is that it's going to change their qualification. It's gonna push them to a bit of a lower price point. And some people say, well, that's good long-term and it is. Uh, but I would have liked to see these changes reflected a little bit more on those targeted areas of Toronto and Vancouver, which means the higher the price point, the more things would be affected. Um, so yeah, so the, the mid-sized markets like Edmonton, Montreal, Calgary are going to feel the effects of this for sure. And the country is really paying for the excesses of two very localized markets both of which have land use policies that are restricting uh, market activity. So buyers probably will drift further outside of urban centers, which is good news for a market like Milton. 
Long term, it means, it means more responsible purchases, which is good. That means less defaulting in the mortgage industry. It means uh, generally people are making safer choices. And the sharing of risk between the government and the banks long term means that the banks are going to download those costs to consumers. CMHC premiums will likely go up. They're reviewed annually. So most of the existing conditions in the market in this hot market we know in 2016 are still present, meaning greenbelt and land use plans. One of the big reasons why Vancouver and Toronto uh, have such a hot market is because of the restrictions put in place by by local, uh, provincial, and even federal governments. Uh, they can't grow past a certain point. Low interest rates are still here, and I I would even note that there's the possibility with these changes that the rates are are probably going to stay the same or maybe even go down a little bit. Uh, foreign capital will still seek Canada. It's still seen as a safe haven. It also, the low dollar makes buying very attractive for a lot of international investors. And the other thing that's happening is baby boomers are giving a lot of money to first time buyers. So that's going to help them with some of these new rules. But a lot of these things are still here. And I believe the market is not just going to collapse. Uh, there's still a lot of reasons why real estate will still remain strong. Uh, the other thing that happens is Toronto has a second municipal land transfer tax in the 416 area code that restricts supply and sales. Meaning you have a lot of buyer demand, you don't have as much supply, it means prices are gonna increase. So if you have any questions about how this affects you, uh, give us a call or you can go to miltondailyhomes.com.